Hey there, how's it going? A few weeks ago, we held the first ever Vim Jam. Over seven days, participants needed to make a game with a focus of collectibles, while keeping to a theme of there and back. First off, thank you so much to everyone that participated. The turnout was amazing, and it far exceeded anything that we ever thought was possible. The number fluctuated throughout, but in the end, we had 2,000 people join and 467 game submissions, which makes this the 14th largest game jam in itch history in terms of people joined and 10th highest for submissions. Seriously, that's insane. Have you seen how many jams happen on itch all the time? To be in the top 20 is absolutely mind-blowing. I need to give an enormous thank you to 8-Bits to Infinity, and even more specifically, Mr. Joshua McLean, for organizing and running the actual jam. The event was so much fun, and everyone seemed to have a great time, and that's all entirely thanks to them. I've been participating and judging with the 8-Bits to Infinity community for a while now, and it was an utter pleasure to work with them. There's no way I could have done those without you. Thank you so much. The jam itself was fantastic, although my choice of having a focus and a theme did cause some confusion for some people. It is a deviation from the standard game jam format, which is usually just a time limit and a theme. But I'm a big fan of adding more restrictions to help spawn creative problem solving. Plus, this is my favorite format to take part in, so when I was doing my own jam, I figured that's what we'd go with. I did try to make sure that both the focus and the theme were fairly open, so you could do pretty much anything you wanted with them. And I have to say, the jam brought out some amazing mechanics, concepts, and experiences. And I'm super excited to share them all with you. I livestreamed playing over 100 games. And I played even more after that to round out what I missed in the top 50 to 100. Seriously, seeing the creativity of the community is so inspiring. So many people told me they were doing their very first game jam. Some people even told me it was their very first game. I truly hope that everyone enjoyed their experience, and I'm humbled by the fact that so many people wanted to take part. Once again, thank you to all that participated. Congratulations to those that finished, and commiserations to those that didn't. But none of this is what you care about. Let's get to the games and see what you amazing people made. Aside from the top three from the community overall and the judge voting, which we'll talk about first, all the other games are some of my favorites in no particular order. There's a link in the description to play all of the games from the jam, so if you see one you like, definitely check it out. All right, let's start with the community vote winner. In Bud by Engineer Kappa, your spaceship has crash landed on a planet and you must find three parts to repair it and escape. Along the way, you collect several Bud drones, each with a different ability which can open up new routes to take throughout the level. This game is a fantastic retro experience and has one of my favorite abilities ever, a portable infinite jump pad. Seriously, how cool is this? The level design takes full advantage of having you move from one side of the level to the other and then back to the middle where your ship lays. The layout has you moving above or below previously traversed areas, only seeing them again for a few collectibles or because you missed a jump or got hit by an enemy. The game's aesthetics are incredible. The pixel art, the color palette, the design choices. You just can't help but feel like you're playing a missing gem from a bygone era. Our judges winner took the theme a bit more metaphysical with the story-driven O oh Soul by Galapagos. You begin the game a fragment of a soul lost in the aether. You are found by a guardian who helps you resist a demon and its minions. You must recover the lost fragments of your mind, body, and spirit. Collecting each has you playing a small minigame while learning more and more about who you are. You aren't some superpowered space marine or the chosen one. You're a husband and a father trying desperately to return to your wife and child. The mood of the game pulls you in and you want to see this aging protagonist succeed. You put yourself together bit by bit, and during the last battle you were finally overwhelmed. The game asks you one simple question. How will you answer? Second place in the community vote is Pushy Worm by Sid Fish Games. This snakebird inspired movement puzzle game is just adorable. You play as a worm dad that has to leave home to collect fruit for your three kids. It begins fairly straightforward. Push fruit in hole, get adorable victory sound. But over the course of the 15 levels, the game increases in difficulty and you will start to really have to consider every movement you make. Sometimes the goal isn't just as simple as putting the fruit in the hole. The art is so cute and the game feels really polished. Major bonus points for the addition of an undo button. This removes a lot of the frustrations that can happen in game jam puzzle games. Not having to start the whole level over again because of a single mistake keeps the players engaged in the puzzle's solution instead of having to just repeat steps over and over again. This way you're free to try and explore different solutions while you're trying to figure out how to not fall on those nasty spikes. Second place for the judges vote is Hop Hop Miner by Havana24. 
Pop Pop Miner is a very polished game that feels like I should already be playing it on my phone. You play as this adorably big nosed miner that descends into a cave Battletoad style. Landing on these rocks will give you blue gems that can be spent in the shop between descents, and landing on enemies will increase your rope length so you can make it further down the mine. When you've reached the end of your rope, literally, you will be hoisted out of the mine, meaning you must make your way past all of the obstacles again in reverse. The down and back flow of the game is great to get that just one more feeling out of the player. As every time you descend, the mine changes, and every time you reach the gem, it gets a bit deeper. The game is more challenging than it appears, and you'll catch yourself playing run after run trying to beat your score. The third place entry for the community vote is Rewinder by Rice Noodles. In Rewinder, you play as a scientist that opened a portal to another dimension. As typically happens in these situations, your daughter gets trapped inside, and we must spend the next eight years preparing to go into the hostile environment ourselves. On the other side of the portal, we must keep ourselves tethered to our lab to survive. We can break the local ores for resources to power up our gun, which is used for fighting and mining, or to increase the length of our tether. Some rocks have a core that can be crafted into a node, which can be placed to create a rotation point for your tether. Why would we need that? Well, if the tether is over the void, i.e. not over the ground, you take damage. The game has you exploring a series of branching paths to collect more materials to craft more nodes and a long enough tether to make it to the chamber with your daughter. When you've reached the end of a path or the end of your tether, you can recall yourself back with the press of a button. This whole concept of mechanic is something that I haven't really seen before and it works so well with the theme as a core mechanic of this game. The final ranked game that we'll talk about is the third place game from the judge vote. Have you ever been in a restaurant and wondered how your food came to be and what a chef does? Well, Chef Don Jian, by Nightfall, Prof, and Zuka, aim to show you that it's way cooler than you ever thought. When an order is placed, we need to run to different sections of the map so we can smack the heck out of some ingredients. Collect the correct ingredients for the orders, and you can send your robot waiter back to deliver the meal. The ingredients won't just stand around and let you brain them, though. They can actually be quite the pain to catch. So careful, or they'll waste all of your time. With three levels of difficulty, which increase the complexity of your recipes, and random level layout, there is a lot of replayability here. The art is fantastic, all the characters are super cute, and the flat Paper Mario aesthetic just hits all the feels for me. Lifeline by Louis Denizet is a wonderfully minimalistic game where you control a dot at the end of a line. As you move, your line will become thinner, and you must collect life nodes which will increase the thickness of your line to keep you going. But be careful, the nodes will also spawn enemy lines that are out to see your line destroyed. But you can survive their onslaught by continuing to collect and grow. I really appreciate the node indicators on your dot to help you from becoming completely lost, but be careful, they show you direction, but not distance. When your line has become too thin, you're pulled back to your starting location, shown your score, and you're ready to begin a new line. The visuals are really appealing to me, with a great look as you're zooming around the level. It's so easy to get lost in, and you'll find yourself starting a new run before you even realized you did it. Off-Brand Hero by Barely Even Games is a cute platformer where you collect coins and special abilities to buy new costumes. Each new costume will give you an ability to help you make your way through the level and confront the bad guy. We start with the universal outfit of the plumber, which allows us to jump higher. Then we become a ninja and get the substitution jutsu. Then we get to be a robot with rocket boots. After that, we become a knight that believes in chivalry. And finally, we get the best costume we can, which is the best you that you can be. Which of course means we have the ability to punch the heck out of the final boss. The world was fun to explore, and it was really cool to get a new costume and see what it did. In Deep Sleep, made by It's Jeppy, you must make your way through each dreamscape level collecting your alarm clocks to help you wake up. You have your trusty pillow with you by your side, which can be used to bounce off of, or you can spin it to slow your fall. The catch is, once you've collected enough alarm clocks, you trigger the Deep Sleep Ghost, which will travel the level in the same path that you've taken. In this game, all of your movement matters, as in later levels, there's still more clocks to collect after the shades appear. Figuring out your path through the level is a really fun challenge, and the narrow misses with your after images make for some great moments. 1113 by Lunid is a game dripping with atmosphere and a somber tale. You must discover the story before the clock at the bottom hits 1113. When it does, you'll be rewound back to your starting position to begin your search anew, but now armed with the knowledge that you previously gained. I won't spoil any of the story here because discovering it is really what this game is all about. The art is amazing and it sets a tone and feel for this game so well. Breakin' A Salvation by Mahmoud J, Demonical Poe, and Ed3 is a different take on Breakout. 
You play on one long stream of levels, which are always slowly making their way towards the paddle. Hitting the blocks above does not cause them to break, but fall. If they hit the paddle, you take damage. If the ball makes contact with them again before they fall off the screen, they will break and drop health, coins, or more balls. This game is really difficult, but in a fun way. The retro vibes are amazing, and when all the balls are flying around, you feel like you're playing pinball with a multiball on. Crystal Mission by Spirits and Iskline is a top-down adventure that has you fighting your way through rooms to collect shards of a crystal. You are equipped with a boomerang that gives you two different attacks, a melee and a range, but the penalty for the range is that the range takes some time to return because it's pretty slow. With a fun variety of enemy types and an impressive boss fight, the game creates a great flow that you'll want to see through to the end. I really appreciate the attention spent on signaling from the enemies. The range enemies react to seeing the player and run and shoot from a distance, giving you the ability to prep and dodge their shots. The ghosts, which can go completely invisible, also have a spot on the ground that appears slightly before they return, so you don't just get blindsided when they show back up. And the boss attacks are very clear about where you will and will not take damage. I'm really impressed with this kind of clarity, especially with the one bit-ish art that the game uses. Spear Fishing by Backward Spy is a trip into a bit of the surreal. You control the spear that's been cast out into the void to collect red trophies. Each one you collect will slow your movement by just a bit. Hitting the green rings will give you a boost, while hitting red rings will slow your movement even more. In the end, when your momentum is finally lost, everything slows and breaks down, only to be pulled backwards to the beginning where you're given your score. There isn't much more to it, but the visuals, music, and overall experience of this is super enjoyable. This is another game where as soon as you finish a run, you immediately want to jump back in for another. Postman Blue by Bernardo Zomer is a super cute puzzle platformer that has you traverse the level to deliver a letter. Once the letter's delivered, you now have to make your way back through that same level, but it's dark now, and the path has changed just a little bit. Watch out because the coins you collect along the way can also change your path, as well as giving you health. You really need to plan out which coins you collect, which ones you don't, because sometimes the only way through is to take some damage. This is a quick and slightly challenging game that mixes platforming and puzzling in a really fun way. The Bounce by Nawirin has you playing as a headphone-wearing ball that has to bounce its way through beautiful stages to grab a flag and return to its starting position. The bouncing is enhanced by the fact that the farther you fall, the higher you bounce. And of course, all the platforms are one-time use only, meaning you need to be sure to have a path you can also use on your way back. Each level also has extra collectibles to amp up the difficulty and make your path harder if you're trying to grab them all. The music, visuals, and gameplay all combine to create a wonderfully surreal platforming experience. Dungeon Dash by Ranch on Bread is a platformer that removes your ability to move other than your dash. You start with the ability to dash twice before you're out and have to touch the ground again to reset. You're trying to make your way home and just before you get there, you fall down a really long hole. Only moving with the ability to dash does take some getting used to. You can't really line things up the exact way you want. But as you play, you begin to understand the distance the dash will travel and how to reach certain areas. As you explore your way through the dungeon, you pick up more dashes, which gives you access to new areas as well as making previous sections easier to maneuver through. When you've finally collected all of the extra dashes, you can use them to attempt to climb out of the giant hole you fell through at the beginning. With great music and use of abstract shapes to build an all-around tough and fun game, this dungeon's definitely worth exploring. Collector Die by Xanderwood is an 80s themed top-down shooter in the style of Smash TV. An anomaly has happened in an arcade and you must travel back in time to collect the lost characters that have been trapped inside of a game. You must fight off waves of bad guys while you collect power-ups and characters. The character spawning is random though, so you have to survive long enough to be able to get them all. This game is oozing with retro charm and gets pretty challenging towards the end. I did manage to beat it on my very first try when I streamed it live, but when I went to record more footage for later, that definitely wasn't the case. The art creator for this game was super adorable, and the gameplay was a lot of fun. Distress Signal by Nina is not officially in my favorites list because the game is so brutally hard. I love pretty much everything about this game except for the fact that it's nigh impossible to beat without dying over and over and over and over again. It's a simple game. You go from your planet to pick up a survivor from a distress signal and come back. Why is that so hard? Well, have a look. You're hitting me with, like, what, ten of these guys right now? And, uh, <laughs> there's no way to kill all those. Like, were, have you are, have you been able to actually, like, beat this in one shot without dying? I'm curious. While playing on stream, I asked the creator if they had ever beaten the game without dying, and I was told no. So I boldly claimed that I didn't even think it was possible, and I would give them a shout-out if they could. 
Nina took that as a challenge and was actually able to pull that off and make a pretty fun video while doing it. Don't do it. Don't spawn more. Don't spawn more. Don't spawn more. Yes! Yes! <laughs> it's totally possible. You just kind of need to learn how the game works a little bit more and accept that it's unfair. So, congrats. I'm very impressed, but I still think the game is way too hard, which I'm pretty sure you agree with since you just put out a video making the game easier as well. So those are some of my top games. I wish I could go into more detail about each of them, as well as show you even more games that I played that were super fun. But unfortunately, this video is already getting long. So really fast, here's some other honorable mention games to go check out. Skills game uses a fun mechanic of needing to collect one-time movement options to solve puzzles. What goes around comes around has you playing both sides of the screen as two boomerangs trying to reach your central goal. Legato has some of the best music I've ever heard in a game jam, and has you hear and playing notes back to open doors. There and Back the Show creates a game show where you actually compete against me to see who will be eaten by aliens. Teddy Bear Story is a heartbreaking game where you're trying to fulfill your daughter's last wish. I have never cared more for a capsule than I did while playing this game. And A Bouncing Tail, which is really, really hard, but I love the mechanic of needing to attack yourself around over open pits to collect a goal and get back. As I said, there were far too many great games to feature them all, so I hope you click on the link in the description and go check out some of them. It really is amazing that this much creativity and enjoyment was all made over the course of a single week. Once again, a huge thank you to everyone that took part and made our first Game Jam something to be remembered. If you enjoyed the experience or missed out and want to give it a try in the future, 8 Bits to Infinity runs regular Game Jams that are a blast to take part in. I'm also one of their judges, so if you take part in one of their future jams, I may play and rate your game. I'm not even slightly exaggerating when I say that none of this would have been possible without them. So, if you're into Game Jams, click the link in the description and check them out. Thank you all very much for watching. I would like to give an extra special shout out to my patrons, especially Abby Sean, David Scott, Nightfall, Kevin Holgau, Liam Sorta, MLK, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, and Straight Up Gruntle. You are all awesome people and I truly appreciate the support. Again, if you like what you saw here and you'd like to play any of these games and more, there's a link to the Jam page in the description. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch streams, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.